Hi everybody, welcome once again to Shorty on the Fly. Today, we will be tackling a stimulator. Don't get nervous, I understand this is one that scares a lot of people away, but if you've been with me from the beginning, you know every technique that we're going to use and you're gonna be able to execute this just fine. So just pay attention. Um, we have a few little goodies that'll make it a little easier on you. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. So let's go ahead and get started. I am using a size 10 curved nymph hook. I like the curved nymph hook. You can certainly tie this on a uh, straight shank hook if you like, but I, I just like the, the curvature. I like the way it looks. We're gonna start our thread at about the 60% point on the hook. And this is kind of key to getting this right. Um, many times the reason you have problems with this is because you set the wing too far forward and then you don't have enough room to work uh, and you will you know when we get there you'll see what I'm talking about I'm gonna take this around to I left the barb so you can see it normally I would pinch that off but we're gonna let the thread hang just there at the barb and I'm using um, orange uh, fluorescent orange Danville in six odd and I've already taken a clump of yearling elk hair and this is another factor that's pretty important that you use yearling elk because it's long enough to go on the entire length of the hook whereas sometimes regular elk hair is not long enough and we're gonna go ahead and measure to form a tail that's about the gap, the hook gap in length. And I'm gonna come and take two wraps of thread and then pull straight toward me and then take another one just for good measure. Now, here's where I deviate a little bit from the original. We're gonna pull that thread up or the, the hairs up and out of the way. And I'm gonna run my thread back up to that point and then pull the hairs so that they go all the way around the hook. And now I'm gonna take just a couple of wraps to trap everything there. Okay, and sometimes you will get one that's a little short. So we'll come in and trim that guy out of there. All right, and now just lift everything up above the hook and come in and snip that away. And now let's cover up those butt ends so that we have a good landing area. And then here's where we're gonna go a little bit off the reservation again. I'm gonna take open spiral wraps back to the original tie-in point because I want the hairs to not compress down onto the hook. That'll help with the floatability of the fly. At this point, we're gonna tie in a rib. And I'm gonna go back up, tie that rib in and come back up right over those wraps that I did before. Okay. And then we're gonna tie our hackle in and I'm using a brown hackle and this is a size 10 hook. And I've actually, I'm actually using a hackle that's a size 14. And the reason for that is that if you look at the diameter of how large this is going to be, it's actually uh, uh, almost twice the size of the diameter of the hook. So that's going to make the hackle stick further out. So that's, we compensate that by using a slightly smaller hackle. Okay, now I'm going to run back up to my tie-in point and we're going to switch materials. For the body of the abdomen of the fly, I'm using orange Unistretch, which I like. You can certainly make this any color you want. You can use dubbing if you'd like it. That works. You know, I, I certainly a lot of people do that. But I'm going to go ahead and tie that off. And I have my, I have my dubbing or excuse me, my, my uni stretch in a bobbin holder, which will make it easier 
to work with. So I'm just putting one whip in there and I'm gonna come in, cut that off because we're gonna reattach that in just a little bit. So I've got it in the bobbin holder and I'm gonna run that to the rear of the hook. It's okay that it's kind of splaying out because I'm gonna come back up and cover those up. Okay. And here I am staying at that 60% spot. And now I wanna go ahead and start my thread on the hook again. I'm just gonna come in and trap that. Trim away the waste thread and come in and clip off my uni stretch. Now, come and grab our hackle. Let me get that back just a tad. And we're gonna wrap the hackle right up with open spiral, even wraps. I like about five. You know, whichever, whatever you're doing, try to make it the same. All right, and then tie that off. And then we're gonna come, and I'm not counter wrapping. I don't like to counter wrap a rib. I think it traps too many hackles. I'm gonna wrap my rib in exactly the same direction that I wrapped the hackle. And it's just to make it a little bit sturdier. And then come in and tie that off. And we'll just helicopter the wire to break it off. And then I have a clump of, again, yearling elk hair that I already took off and stacked. It should be about twice as big as the clump that you used for the tail. And I'm gonna come in here and measure it to go right to the back of the tail. Grab with your left hand. We're gonna take two, pull straight toward you. And now I'm gonna take and wrap through the butt ends to further lash it to the hook. Okay. Now at this point, it's a good idea to come in and do a quick whip finish just in case when I go to cut the, to trim the hairs off, just in case I cut my thread because it, it has happened. Now it's hard to believe, but it has happened. I'm lifting everything up above the hook and usually I can get just about everything out of there. And we did. Okay, yeah, pretty good. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and wrap back over those butts so that I have a smooth landing area for the next step. Just wrap on over everything that you can. Try to get it as smooth as possible. We're going for kind of a torpedo shape here. All right, that's pretty good. Now come all the way back up to where the, the wing is. And at this point, I'm gonna tie in my hackle, which once again, I'm using a smaller hackle than would normally be sized for this fly. And I prepared it by trimming off the fibers down at the end, and we'll tie that in real good there. Okay. And now I'm gonna use some yellow beaver dubbing you can use whatever color you like or whatever kind you like. I just, this is what I've always used to form my thorax. And we're taking 
just you know as usual less is more when you're dealing with dubbing and I've got about a two inch noodle on there which we're gonna go ahead and wrap and then grab my hackle And wrap it. I like a lot of wraps of this hackle at the front of the fly. I think it makes it look really good. So I'm going to take five wraps, leave myself a good place to tie off. And there you have it. Okay. Now we come in and whip finish. and the fly is complete. As with so many of these patterns, you can alter it to your uh, liking. You can change the color, you can change the size. Um, you know, whatever you like, it's up to you. You can, you can make this into whatever kind of uh, creature you want. A lot of times they'll take it as a stone fly. Sometimes I think uh, in the warmer months, uh, they take it as a, uh, a grasshopper falling in. But whatever it is, it's a proven winner. Don't be afraid of this fly. Please tie some up. Let me know how you make out. As always, if you like it, leave a comment. Subscribe. We love hearing from you. I bid you peace.